Hey guys, it's Alan here, back at it with episode 2 for Startups and Downs. Today we're going to be talking about changing from a bootstrap mindset to a growth mindset. This will be great for those of you who are just emerging uh, from having customer revenue and looking to spend that money productively. Today I'll dive into exactly what I'm going to spend my money on and we'll do a catch up episode then in a few months time once we've had a good idea about whether that's been productive or not. So in Ireland we have a competition called the Competitive Start Fund. It's a competition run by Enterprise Ireland and it's basically an application form with a uh, pitch involved in it. You go into a panel of judges, pitch in front of them and if they like you they'll bring you onto the Competitive Start Fund uh, through their High Potential Startup Division and that's a €50,000 investment for 10% of your company. But the catch is that Enterprise Ireland will only ever own a maximum of 10% of your company. So if you go on to raise a Fred around with them involved in it, they won't take any more money. So it's uh, definitely a, a, a good deal for early stage companies. The second part of my investment revenue is kind of come from a competition that I won called Ireland's Best Young Entrepreneur. So I won the Limerick division, and for those of you not in Ireland, Limerick is basically like a state, so I kind of won like the state or county level uh, division for Limerick, and won €15,000 from that. That's equity-free investment, just has to be spent on parts of the business that you pre predetermine or pre-select them. Uh, so for that kind of stuff, I selected marketing equipment uh, and, and marketing spend, basically, would be kind of the two major areas that I selected for that. So for myself, with the investment revenue of about €65,000 and then the customer revenue behind that as well, looking at, I suppose, like the bones of a hundred grand there to, to spend on, on the business. So it's definitely important to, I suppose, be obviously super grateful for that, but uh, be really aware that it's a small amount of money in the grand scheme of things and it could easily be... Uh, be, be put to waste if you don't track your return on investment properly. So there's a few things we can try and do for that uh, to try and track ROI. Uh, it's one will be uh, I suppose more of a preventative measure in that anyone that you're going going with, especially with such a, a small amount of cash to spend, really try and push for a short term contract. Don't go into these long like 12, 18, two year contracts, etc. Uh, go for that short term contract. So if you look if it's not working out, if you can't prove the ROI to it, that you're not left hanging there and that you actually have that room and that legal room to get out and that everyone knows that um, that's the deal from day one. Again, uh, tracking that ROI, I think one great thing would be to interview. So, for example, if you're trying to hire a marketing company, uh, ask them for a list of their clients, get the clients off their website, go and call those clients, make sure that they're happy with their service uh, and make sure that they're getting a good return on investment. That will be one thing that I'd really recommend to everyone to do uh, because obviously people pick the, the case studies on their website, they pick the reviews, everything like that. Uh, it's important just to go out there and, and get a really good raw, uh, unfiltered picture about what that company's like before you hire them. And on the metrics, like return on investment, obviously you want to be proving that one euro in equals five euros or 10 euros or 15 euros or 50 euros out. So the most important thing there is to just predetermine what are those success criteria for that client uh, or for that person that you're hiring. So just be sure and uh, be ruthless and audited uh, definitely uh, to know that, you know, are they tracking engagement? Are they tracking metrics? Are they tracking like the sales metrics? Or uh, is it engagement? Is it customer experience that they should be improving? Uh, is it a reduction in return rates? Is it like what is their actual success metrics? It may not be a direct one-to-one uh, -one correlation between uh, spend and revenue uh, but definitely make sure that you have those agreed on agreed upon before you start another great thing you can do is actually hire two people for the same job if you're actually in that capacity to do so whether it's marketing or sales or development uh, oftentimes if you just hire like two let's say sales interns or two um, marketing executives doing it in Again, a short-term contract uh, can be really valuable because you can just benchmark them off each other. It creates a bit of competition and it, it creates a, a good bit of oversight as well. Uh, if they want to be the most high-performing person on the team, they'll really work hard for you and uh, they'll know that there's that there's a bit of internal competition as well, which is really good and, and, and healthy to do if done, if done properly. So just diving in real quick about what I'm going to be spending the majority of my cash on. Like obviously there's things like salary and overheads and uh, simple things like subscriptions like HubSpot for example. Uh, but I'd say the vast majority of my uh, spending over the next while is actually going to be in the sales process. I've got a really like regimented and replicable uh, sales process to create leads. Uh, it's just so time consuming that I just need to outsource that at the moment. Uh, right now my basically sales pipeline goes up and down with the amount of time that I can actually spend on it and I need someone to be able to generate consistent leads for me, book meetings for me uh, and get me in front of those key decision makers. It's something that I've actually 
learned how to do myself I think that's really important uh, for hiring as well is that if you know how to do it yourself that you can write that process down and pass it on to someone else to do um, the one thing you don't want to be doing is experimenting on a, on a really tight budget the next uh, key part of the revenue I suppose maybe around 25% of what we'd be spending towards marketing actually uh, it's something that I definitely need to experiment with in-house first and on, on a smaller budget on a smaller scale and just kind of replicate some of those ads and get them up and running uh, before I can try and outsource that so I'm definitely not ready to outsource it yet but it's something that we just need to have a bit of money behind to try and you know put into those Facebook ads the Instagram ads uh, LinkedIn ads etc um, and once I can actually do that once I have the budget for that then it'll be something that eventually I'd hope to outsource and then for us, in order to try and grow and add new services and products to our business, we'd be looking to invest in some hardware. Uh, so whether it's VR, uh, the latest iPhones, even a, a, a Mac Pro to do some really intense 3D crunching uh, and some machine learning as well, which would be really interesting to try and uh, announce in, I suppose, coming on uh, next year. Uh, trying to get the hardware to actually do those experimental things so that we can add and keep innovating, uh, add new products to our line and new services to our lineup will be will be really important for us for sure. Um, and then lastly is conferences. Uh, so there's a bunch of conferences both in retail and tech uh, and even some, some other tertiary ones that we need to go to. So like in the likes of Milan, Germany, uh, Paris, London, there's a bunch of really interesting locations that we'd need to go to. Um, and in order to do that, obviously, you're going to need some marketing budget to be able to get to get across there. So there's a breakdown for me, guys. It's basically going to be sales, marketing, hardware, and conferences. What really kind of changed my mind this week was actually a message from Sean Allen. He said to me basically that you'd regret spending that money if you don't, and it's kind of crazy to think about. Uh, if you do, if, you know, no one's gonna re no one's gonna remember if you mess up that hundred k. What they definitely will remember is if you don't spend it and don't go anywhere, and if you don't spend it you've zero chance of growth so like i mean you need to spend to grow at some point and for me that's really what kind of kicked me over the edge this week and in, in shifting my mindset so really appreciate that that sean uh, if you guys haven't seen sean's youtube channel link will be below he's got amazing ios tutorials and uh it's definitely something that uh, his videos have helped me out in launching our app way back in i think 2017 so uh absolutely check him out if you guys are struggling to get out of that mindset hit me up in the comments or you can dm me on instagram as well and hopefully you guys will eventually be able to break out of the mindset because i know i was stuck in it for too long for sure um we should be growing quicker than what we are at the moment and that's definitely uh, absolutely down to myself and my own i suppose fears and uh, trepidations around uh wasting that money but uh, absolutely huge mindset mindset shift this week so appreciate it sean uh catch up soon guys and we'll see you next week for episode three